the Matrix, meeting a Bruce Lee flick, cause that's how hard I was kicking it to Honey Dick. Standing up and cheering at this hilarious romantic tale. I was inspired to write this play by my experiences growing up in New York City. I grew up in Astoria Housing Projects in Queens, which was heavily uh, black and, and Puerto Rican. A sweetly enacted story of two college students, strangers from different cultures, who fall in love at first sight. The message of the play is so powerful. It speaks to our communities um, across generations. It speaks about social and political issues that are important to me having grown up poor uh, on the south side of Chicago, so. Hey, Lisa, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for allowing us to come out and do another show of Platanos and Collard Greens with such a wonderful message that you have given us to deliver. I ask that you just watch over us, Lord, and keep us safe as we go out and, and deliver this message and that we do it to the best of our abilities as you would have us to do it. Um, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for all these wonderful actors and the opportunity to do what we love and to get paid for it. You are so great and kind and of wonderful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We out here on TV. Also, in any language you see fit. Also, say in Nigerian. Uno, two, three. Oh, wow. has a universal message that everyone can relate to it across cultures, across generations. And so yes, the relationships, um, you know, of someone growing up and trying to uh, I have their own identity apart from their parents and, and have their own beliefs and values while still holding on to those things that are important to their parents. She ironed her hair. And then I'm the crazy one? Your mama ironed that girl's hair. I meal steals. <laughs> you know, this is not exaggeration. The audience laughs out loud a hundred times during the play. And it, but then they leave the play like, wow, that was deep. You know, so they get both experiences. I mean, what was that famous Puerto Rican poem you were telling me about? About hiding your grandmother in the back because she was black. <laughs> so why is it that we can dance and party together, but we can't take care of business together? Come one, on! Two, yeah! Come on! One, two, three, and then we're gonna go. Okay. One, two, three, go! Oh. I mean, I've seen Puerto Rican families with a brother who look like Mark Anthony and his sister who look like Sadie Cruz. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Doing that, man! Want to identify as a dirty, ignorant, downtrodden set? Hold up, I'm gonna let you finish. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had the best video of all time. <laughs>
while HIV runs rampantly in our community. Now after 500 years of getting the short end of the stick, it's about time we started changing it. Whether your chocolate complexion or butter pecan reekin The deeper the leaves, the darker the berry Look at my leg If you lie, you all right If you black, get back Everybody can relate to um, having prejudices. I think we all suffer from that at one point or another. It just depends, you know, how honest we are with ourselves. I lived it on a personal note. I, I somehow got the message very young that it was always better to be fair-skinned, to be blue-eyed, to have like fine features or so they call it, and good hair. Never second-guessing who you are. Always be proud of who you are. Always be the best that you can be. As a Latina in America, at some point you're going to face racism, and I did feel it when I moved to America. The scene where Freeman and Malady have the, the debate on whether Light-skinned girls are better than dark-skinned girls. So then as soon as I read the script, the first time, the first thing I associated with was, wow, this is the same thing that's going on with other ethnicities. It doesn't have to be just black Latin. It could be anything, you know, Korean and Chinese. So it was not a foreign concept to me at all. When I joined the company, that's the reason that I joined it, because I felt like it was an important message, one that I personally lived, and one that I think would resonate with my own experience and my own family, even. I swear that I thought David had taken a year in the life of, of Jordy's and had, had gone through, you know, me with my grandmother and things that uh, the older generation say with relationships with, with blacks and Dominicans. Well, I play the role of Malady in Platanos and Collard Greens, and when I think of Malady, I think of strong, I think of vulnerable, I think of a girl trying to find her way in this world. So I kind of uh, fall back on just Different times in my life where me and my father sat down and had certain conversations and he's kind of schooled me on what he went through growing up um, in his era, so to speak. When I was growing up, I felt like I belonged to the other group, the group that wasn't beautiful because of, you know, my dark skin, my curly hair. And I definitely got it from, I think, the third grade. It's the same dynamic, so I really connected with that first and foremost with the show. Angelita is absolutely wonderful to me. She's something that I've learned, you know, what from when I started. She was very close to me. Um, we're both the young and um, learning ourselves, learning ourselves through our culture, our families, and the experiences that Melody goes through. I've have been fortunate enough to go through as well, and to be able to put it on stage and and make it as real as I could.